Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Long Beach today. She is back. She is Patricia hey. Bethune. We know her well. You know her from True Blood and Mad Men. She is now on Longmire on A&E. She brings with her a very special woman. Her name is Lori Van Tilburg. She's the executive director of the Southern Caregiver Resource Center. And we have known each other, Patricia, for right. some time as a result of our commitment to being caregivers. Exactly. So, exactly. And yeah. I caregive gave right. a bunch of my friends and family mm -hmm. for a number of years and then I wrote my book right. what can I do a guide for family and friends of right. caregivers just to you know to express what I learned of how, what to do right and what to do wrong to take care of yourself and as you know I have been a caregiver right. my wife has been battling Crohn's and colitis for quite some time she's in remission she's doing great oh, but there was a time as you know Patricia yeah. that she was struggling and so I was a husband I was a father I was a caregiver it was challenging and so Lori, the work that you are doing, and Patricia's well, a spokesperson with you, I mean, God bless you. Well, the numbers you. are growing. You know, I was talking family and friends. It's now expanded to such a younger group of people with the veteran caregivers, and that's where Lori is doing such and, remarkable work. And I just saw you on NCIS, yes, and you yes. were playing a military mom. <laughs> a mom, of, yeah, and, yeah. And so it's kind of ironic that here you are today to right. announce a very important critically needed program in Los Angeles. Right, last week we had mm -hmm. our uh, mm -hmm. event in Los Angeles at right. the Athletic Club. There were mm -hmm. over 100 people there. Yeah. Patricia was there of course. Yeah, yeah. moderating a panel right. with two caregivers, Nikki Stevens and Melissa Como, who right. are both caring for their husbands with traumatic brain injury, PTSD. They're very young, in their early 30s. One of them has five kids, another one has one young son. And the impact that it is have, you know, this is having on the families is considerable. And let's talk about what we now know as Operation Family Caregiver. The mm -hmm. program exists in San Diego. It's expanding to Los Angeles now. Mm -hmm. It's through the Rosalind Carter Institute. Right. Correct. God bless her. It's, correct, yes. Amazing. It's through the Rosalind mm -hmm. Carter Institute. And we were awarded the contract uh, about three years ago in San Diego mm -hmm. to establish Operation Family Caregiver, working primarily with post 9-11 caregivers of people with PTSD and traumatic brain injury, but it's really for all eras. And the nice thing about it is this intervention, basically, it's a coaching model that mm. families can take advantage of it through Skype. We come to your home, we wow. go to Starbucks, and as you said, we just launched it in Los mm -hmm. Angeles, but we can really serve all of California. Skype. <laughs> well, Skype, but it's a free and confidential service, because that's one of the issues, is that uh, these are very private, very proud people. And they don't want to expose their husbands or themselves. Can we talk about that? Because, mm -hmm. look, when I was a caregiver, I'm still a caregiver, but an active caregiver right. for my wife, um, it felt appropriate. Uh, she appreciated the support. Oftentimes, these men and women who are veterans, they pride themselves, as you've taught me, on self-reliance. Right. right. And now they need to rely upon someone. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It's very, very difficult for the family to reach out for help and support. Mm -hmm. Either the person that was in the military, because we serve active duty as well, mm -hmm. or the veteran, they don't want people to know that they need help and support. And then the family, they don't want to reach out for help and support either. So that's the biggest challenge we have, is how to get these families to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. And again, you're focused on the caregiver. Correct. Exactly. And that, you know, Patricia, you taught me, my, mm -hmm. our good friend Lisa Gibbons. Oh, yes, another, when, yes. Right. When I right. was going through my darkest days as a caregiver, Lisa and Patricia taught me that a healthy caregiver is a healthy cared for. Right, exactly. And Ex that, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Because mm -hmm. if you're not taking care of yourself, you're really no good to someone else. Mm -hmm. and, and so often you're not taking your own medications. You're not giving yourself mm -hmm. that moment to breathe. You're just pushing through, okay, now I gotta take care of my children. Now I gotta do this and now I gotta do that. And sooner or later, you're just gonna pop. And I, you know, I know a story of a husband who was caregiving for his wife and he wasn't paying attention to his own health and she uh, got better and he got sick mm -hmm. and he's now gone oh, and right. she's not. Right. If he had been focused on his own <sighs> health, yes. Yes. he would have noticed the signs. Yeah, that, go ahead. Mm -hmm. That's what we always say, you know, put your oxygen mask on first, you know, so that you can take care of yourself and then take care of your family. Mm -hmm. Because we do see that depression, physical health problems are significantly higher in the caregiving population. So you, you're right, you have mm -hmm. to take care of yourself. Well, and so many people uh, are isolated because a lot of these folks are not in the city. They can't actively go, like take the time to drive like the two hours to go get help, which is great about Lori's service. She can do it via Skype and it can be private and it can and be just so in your funny. little room by yourself without 
exposing anything to of your, your it, partner. It, it's so funny you say that. I was just talking with someone about the era when I was a caregiver. Mm -hmm. Everyone was so focused on my wife, as they should have been, but I felt so alone. Well, and but see, so just lonely. what you just said, as they right. should right. have Even been. Right, I was being. Because yeah. it's a normal thing. They're far right. worse off than I am. Right. I have no right to complain. And it's not a complaint. Right. Or selfish to take care of yourself. It's actually quite generous because you're better for them. I want to talk about these young men and women. Mm -hmm. And they generally are young men and women. Now, when I was most active as a caregiver, I was in my late 30s, early 40s. Mm -hmm. These women. I'm going to say women, but I know women get hurt in military, but let's just for argument's sake. These women who are caregiving for their injured husbands, they could be in their early 20s. Yes. A Am lot I of wrong? them are. A lot of yeah. them are in their early 20s. Mm -hmm. And the hard thing about that is, you know, many of them may have just, you know, been married. They don't really have any family support because they've moved to some base that, you know, their family isn't right. at. They don't have the life skills that, you know, people that are older have. They, they don't have financial resources. And so it's very hard. And you're right. I mean, it is primarily women. Mm -hmm. I mean, spouses are the primary caregivers, you know, the military caregivers, followed by parents and then family and friends. I want to turn to you since yes. you just played military mom. I know it's just on yes. TV, yes, but, exactly. but let's do talk about the military moms and dads because think about it. You know, they're presumably getting up there in years, right. mm -hmm. they expect it to be cared for. Maybe yeah, the, right. the military vet had not had a spouse and now they're being a caregiver. And, and this is long-term care. This is daily long-term care. It, it's mm -hmm. not a time, uh, time right. illness. So therefore their whole structure, their whole life and their well-being because they're not as strong as a 20-year-old. Yet their love is as strong, obviously. Of course. And so they're now put in the position to reverse, and they have no one to take care of them. So it's just another support to reach out when you have a problem. You're not complaining. But mm -hmm. this is such a great organization just to give you the resources, where to turn. And I want to ask about an element of your work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I was caring for my wife, her illness I could see and touch. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Lisa Gibbons deals with Alzheimer's patients, brain-wasting diseases. Right. It's got to be a real challenge when you can't see and touch the disease. That's I mean, TBI, really hard. maybe mm -hmm. you can see, but yeah. PTSD, you can't see it. Yeah, and often you really no. can't see either I mean, one. Right, you know? and but so sometimes TBI, but yes. They look yeah. just like just like us here at the table right mm -hmm. now. And also, it's not diagnosed for a very mm -hmm. long time. So a lot, it's, it's good to get the information right. out because you may not know what you're dealing with. And this may be happening, and it'd be a good resource just to call, check in. Yeah, let's talk about that, yeah. because why did we want you here? Spread the word right, spread and the let word. people know you exist. Mm -hmm. How can we access your services? Well, you have an 800 number, yes? We do. It's 1-800-827-1008. And that's the key, really, to call and ask for help and support. We talk to you about your own personal situation. You can get connected to a a coach to come to your house, do it through Skype. And I presume, even though you're focused on caregivers, God bless you, that if the cared needs assistance, you can make referrals. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. For sure. So, you For know, sure. we mm -hmm. do the Operation Family Caregiver uh, program, but mm -hmm. through that and doing the assessment and working with the caregiver, we look at the needs of the children, we look at the needs of your veteran or your active duty person. I mean, mm -hmm. if there are other services out there that would be a benefit to you, we right. definitely connect you. In our final moments, I'd like to ask you about Mrs. Carter. Rosalind Carter, I know you both oh met her. Oh my gosh. I mean, yes. is she the force behind this? <laughs> she is. She's yeah. a force behind so many things mm -hmm. about caring for other mm -hmm. people unselfishly. Mm -hmm. Both she and President Carter, they are amazing, wonderful people. And this organization she began will go on for many years right. mm -hmm. because of her. Thank you so much, and thank you for what thank you're you. doing. Thank really you for having us. Of course, her name is Patricia Bethune. You can see her now on Longmire <laughs> yes. on Netflix. Uh, <laughs> she is Lori Van Tilburg. She is the executive director of the Southern Caregiver Resource Center. My name is Brad Pomerts. Please stay healthy, stay safe. I'm in Long Beach, and you're watching Charter Local.